This is the third stop of the Ice Cross Downhill World Championship. Traveling from Northern Europe's frozen Finland to the frigid Midwestern United States, the fearless competitors are not only going to have to battle the elements, but some jet lag for the third race of the season. With St. Paul's magnificent cathedral as its backdrop and over 100,000 cheering cold fans in attendance, the world's best ice cross downhill skaters are here to put on a show, tackling a track the length of a football field full of jumps, rollers, sharp turns, and a wall ride with temperatures plummeting below freezing. Which one of these guys are going to be able to stay on their feet? This is Crash Dice St. Paul, and you are watching the Red Bull Signature Series. Hello friends, Sal Masekela here, your host of the Red Bull Signature Series, and allow me to welcome you to the chilly capital of St. Paul here in Minnesota. Now the first two stops took place in Europe, now the series shifts to North America. Hosting its sixth year in front of the majestic St. Paul Cathedral, this location continuously draws over 100,000 fans a year since 2012, and in freezing temperatures no less. Why, you might ask? Well, speed, the sheer spectacle, and of course, good old home country pride. And what's better than a little head-to-head -head racing on ice? You add into that one of the most difficult starts that we've ever seen in Crash Dice history, and you got Crash Dice St. Paul. Who are the fearless humans willing to take on a course like this? We will begin with Team USA, Max Dunn and Cameron Nas. They sit one and two in the World Championship standings, and with home ice advantage, they are looking to extend their leads. In only his second full year competing, Max Dunn has taken a second place in both France and Finland, whereas defending champion Cam Nas has a win under his belt in Marseille and a third for his Finland finish. And only 30 points behind in the world standings in third place is the 2015 world champion Canadian Scott Croxel, who took home his first win of the season in Finland. We're set for the men's round at 32, so we will check in with Todd Harris and the NHL Hall of Famer and my ice skating coach, Jeremy Roenick. Thank you very much, Sal, as we welcome you to chilly St. Paul, Minnesota. Thanks for doing the heavy lifting as we bring you up to speed on what is going to happen. 1,000 points for a win. And remember, it's four men and a race. The top two move on to the next round. Gate choice is based on qualifying time. No pushing is allowed, but JR, as we know, a lot of incidental contact takes place, and the World Championship standings are, as Sal mentioned, Max Den of the USA leads the way, followed by Cameron Nas, the defending champion. But don't forget, Scotty Croxel of Canada currently sitting in third place. Let's talk about this course. St. Paul, always a great venue, and they come out in force to support these athletes. Yeah, and one of the more dangerous courses in the crashed ice venue. If you watch this start, an amazing deep drop into that first Mogul Hill and over the BF Goodrich drop zone right there. And look at this tight turn. Actually go up the embankment and have to turn hard to only come down with so much speed. These guys really have to be careful. Injuries will be very prone in this track. As they make their way through that rhythm section, still more heavy features to deal with here at top speeds and four men battling for spots. For more on this technological marvel, we check in with Will Christian. 
Thanks, Todd. Well, no surprise out here on the weather front. It is Minnesota in the middle of winter and it is cold. About 28 degrees Fahrenheit out here right now. And these below freezing temperatures are making the ice very brittle and giving us some very speedy race conditions. Controlling that extra speed, but knowing where and when to use it on the track is going to be absolutely crucial for our athletes. Those timing tactics are going to start for them straight out the start gates as they face possibly one of the most technical start sections we've ever seen in Red Bull crashed ice history. Another important factor here tonight is going to be racing clean. Any contact, any falls is going to be costly, especially at the end of the track when so much speed needs to be carried just to get up and over that huge corner jump before the finish. So the key to taking a win here tonight in St. Paul, stay mentally alert, physically agile, and most importantly, stay out of trouble. Guys, back to you. And Will, for you, stay warm as we get set for our first race in the round of 32. It is heat number one, four athletes with just two moving on to the quarterfinals. And we kick things off with a real bang here with Jim De Paoli. He comes to us by way of Switzerland. Cameron Nas, the defending champion, second right on your screen. Guillaume Bouvet Morissette of Canada. And of course, Eli Kreider of the USA in the dark blue. Well, Cameron Nas in front of his state fans. He's from Minnesota. He's going to love performing in front of his family and friends. He likes this track. He's won it before. We'll see how he manages this start right down a steep drop in right there. You see he manages really well. No strides and making sure you come over that first hump in, in control. As they go up the wall right, it is Cameron Nas. He had issues with hole shots and starts in Finland, not here in St. Paul. Cameron Nas, the defending series champion, out in front. It is Guillaume Bouvet Morissette of Canada City in second place, as other athletes in the back having issues with traction, but not for Cameron Nas. Makes his way up the wall and right back down for an early round of 32 win, taking Guillaume Bouvet Morissette with him into the quarterfinals. Wow, what a smooth run for Cameron Nas right there. Just started off so perfect. Look at that explosion out through the gates and then dropped into that hole. He hit, skates hit perfectly at the same time. And look, no strides because you want to come up this first embankment, making sure that you stay tight to the wall, keep that lead. And being tactical is very important here. Coming up over the dyno bridge, you have to make sure that you keep your speed because as Will talked about, if you don't do that, you're not going to get up that last embankment that's going to take you to the finish line. And there it is, Cameron Nas. So it is Cameron Nas and Guillaume Bouvet Morissette moving on to the quarterfinals. We are just getting started in St. Paul. More athletes hit the ice, literally, when we return to Crash Dice. You are watching the Red Bull Signature Series. Welcome back to the Red Bull Signature Series. I am your host, Sal Masakela, and this is Crashed Ice. When St. Paul hosted its first Crashed Ice in 2012, very few Americans had ever even heard of the sport, nonetheless competed in it. Local skaters made their pilgrimage to the shadow of the St. Paul Cathedral to try this bizarre course that few could have actually fathomed. That included a guy named Cameron Nas, who was quickly named Rookie of the Year. Since Nas has emerged as the leader and face of Team USA while also recruiting the best athletes to compete by his side. He also befriended Canadian Scott Croxel, which created a healthy rivalry between Teams USA and Canada, occasionally forming an alliance when it feels like the world is going up against all of North America. So, who are these fearless North Americans? I think that we're better. I want to be on the podium lifting that number one trophy. We always want to beat the Canadians. I want to win. We've been on top for the last three years. Now it's kind of Canada, US. It's just a, a great competition. North America versus the world is a real thing. North America is by far the best. We win most of the races. US and Canada, we're, we're always at the top. So I wouldn't say it's North America versus the world, but I, at the same time, we are always at the top. Europe is definitely having some more success, but I mean, if you look at Canada and the US, you've got myself, Scott Kyle, in the top five every single year. You've got more guys from the US coming up recently. Dunn's killing it. I think that the US and Canada just have more talent.
Is there a rivalry between Team USA and Team Canada? Yeah, of course there is. It's the biggest rivalry in the sport. We always push each other and we're always talking smack in the locker room and everyone's always chirping each other. There isn't any like animosity or ill will. Everybody just loves to compete. You know, you, you want to beat them when it comes to race time, but you're always, you know, cheering everybody on. So there's that little extra rivalry. As soon as the gear goes on, uh, it shows. It's super competitive, but it's very friendly as well. We're good buddies off the ice. On the ice, it's a little different story. We're still friends, but uh, you can see that competitiveness in us. And JR, five years ago, Team USA was not the force they are now, but they are absolutely loaded with talent as we get ready for our next race. Yeah, Maxwell Dunn seriously has become one to watch in these races, pushing Cameron Nas and Scotty Croxall to be better, and also a native of Minnesota. And there he is, second on the right, blue with the green shoulders. That is Max Dunn, the 26-year-old from Burnsville, Minnesota. He's joined in this one by another American, 25-year-old Tyler Witte, also of Minnesota. Marcus Yolo of Finland and Shane Renault of Canada round out the four. The Trying to get that whole shot and get some clean ice out in front. Look at this, three wide as they come into the corner as they separate themselves around the wall ride. Wow, what a start. The speed that they have coming down that first drop in is just amazing. They all manage it pretty well. Now coming in, Maxwell Dunn looking pretty smooth, coming across the moguls. And this is where you can take advantage of the speed. You have to get up over that corner mm. in order to take that last race right down to the final. And Marcus Yola of Finland with a great burst around that corner. He handled that bridge the best. It is Yola of Finland moving on. Maxwell Dunn also, who led for most of the race, is moving on to the quarters as well. Well, no time to really think about this race. That drop in right there, you have to stay poised and concentrate. Look at them coming over those moguls, and it's the timing of how they get in. Look at the battle, the, the crushing of that, that turn. You've got to love the competition. Look, three at one time. It's amazing they could stay up, but again, Maxwell Dunn holding that lead. Tyler Witte also in the mix. Shane Renault of Canada in the all black out the back, and he has a problem there in the GoPro corner. Yeah, right there. You can't go up mm. too high on that face, as you can see. If you have a bad angle, you won't be able to make that turn very easily. Maxwell Dunn does it pretty easily. And this is where Yola made the turn. Look at this, goes up high, has more speed. And Dunn goes to his knees, but still enough momentum to cross the line. So it is Yola of Finland and Dunn moving on. Right now we check in with Will Christian, who's standing by with Cameron Nas of the USA. Thanks, Todd. Cam, you seem to have this track very much, Todd. You're looking comfortable and confident out there, and you won here last year. How are you feeling knowing that you're behind in the points race right now, but skating the way you are? Feeling good. Uh, it's only the halfway point of the season, so I'm not thinking about points at all. It's just another race, take it heat by heat, and we'll see what happens. Uh, we saw you get out in front early. You kept it clean. You stayed away from any contact. How important is that going to be here in St. Paul? It's extremely important to get that whole shot. If you don't get the whole shot, you're going to end up battling with someone, and uh, it's not fun to battle on these technical features. Great. Thanks so much, Cam. Good luck. Todd. Thank you, Will. As we head back to the top of the course, there you see the beautiful cathedral here in St. Paul, Minnesota. This is heat number three, the round of 32. Vasilov Kostnar of the Czech Republic, Dan Witte of the USA, Tristan Dugardil of France, extremely fast skater, and your favorite JR, John Fisher of Canada, in the pink, giving us the wave. Yeah, he always gives the kiss and the wave for good luck right there. He has that inside track. Very tough place to start from, but Dan Witte is a very, I mean, He's a very good starter, John Fisher is, and he starts off a little bit slow, but see if he can make up some ground. How about Dan Witte getting a great start up and around the wall ride, and Fisher now sitting in a non-transfer position. It's only the top two moving on to the quarterfinal. The amazing thing about this track, though, JR, is the speed these guys can carry. Well, that's right. That's, oh, in, and that's and exactly what's happened. Witte misjudged those moguls right there, catches an edge, goes hard down as John Fisher takes advantage of a real bad fall by Dan Witte. That looked wow. like it hurt. And you know what's bad when John Fisher almost came to a stop to check on Dan Witte, but it is Tristan Dugardil of France who gets the win. John Fisher comes in a second. That's a great sight to see Dan Witte coming through to finish the course, but he took a hard, hard fall right on his face and chest. Yeah, if you don't time these moguls in a race that's this quick with the speed you're going at, you're going to miss that second mogul. There's a lot of double back-to-back -back moguls. 
And that's what happens right there. His feet hit right into one. He misses the opportunity to pick up his speed. And boy, when you hit these things hard, it hurts. And that ice, as you see, it's so cold. The ice is really hard. And the hit as hard as Dan Witte did, uh, it's, a, it's just a good thing that he finished the pace right here. You see how he hits that mogul right there, stops his momentum, and Ooh. boom, crashes shoulder first into that last hill. John Fisher coming by just to check on him. She's, he's got to finish the race. One more time, look at this. Again, it's the timing. Ooh. It's the timing. It's such a dangerous sport. We show you exactly what happens when you're not paying attention to where your feet are and making sure your center of gravity stays in a certain place. And John Fisher does a good job of maneuvering it. Let's check in with Will. Thanks, guys. John, this track is really claiming some of the races tonight. We saw Dan Witte go down right in front of you. You tried to stop to see how he was. What was going through your mind at that point? Oh, you see someone go down like that, and you're, you're, you're worried about him. But, you know, racing's racing. There's uh, I'm not the guy to take care of him. The paramedics are. And, and uh, you feel for him, but uh, I'm moving on to the next round. Yes, you are. you got a transfer spot. We'll see you then. Perfect. Thanks, Thank John. You. Guys. Thank you, Will. John Fisher's fellow countrymen, Scott Croxel, and the Moriarty twins are yet to hit the ice. We'll have all that when we return to Crash Ice St. Paul, a part of the Red Bull Signature Series. Welcome back to the Red Bull Signature Series. This is Crashed Ice from the capital of Minnesota, St. Paul. Todd Harris joined by Jeremy Roenick and Will Christian, and we are jumping straight into heat four of the men's round of 32. 22-year-old Alex Mercier of Canada, 26-year-old Daniel Bergeson of the USA out of Rochester, Minnesota, Dean Moriarty, the 22-year-old out of Montreal, and Yanni Pateri Mintinen of Finland rounding out the four. Top two moving on to the quarterfinals. I love the start of this race, the backdrop of the church to the cathedral, and look at that drop into that speed slot. As, oh. oh my gosh, we have carnage early. You see how difficult it is coming into the BF Goodrich wall ride. Out front, it is Dean Moriarty of Canada, the man in pink, being closely watched by American Daniel Bergeson in the black. It is all Moriarty making his way through that rhythm section, and you see the distance all the way back to the flying fin, Yanni Pateri Mintinen. Again, a very clean race for both Moriarty and Bergeson, taking advantage of an early mishap at the top. This race is so quick, and you see what happens when you're coming over the mogul section, just making sure that you keep your pace, keep your center of gravity, keep those knees bent, Todd. That's the most important part of this race. And again, look at the start. When you miss your feet on that drop in really early, as Minton did, you go over and you're out of the race real quick. Ferguson takes advantage, Moriarty takes advantage. Look at that tight turn, the ice getting chippy right there, but they keep the speed and keep that turn nice and tight. Up onto the wall ride, it is still Moriarty and Bergeson out in front, and they just seem to work together, JR. Yeah, they know that it's the two of them not make a mistake, and they know they're going to move on. Very important that they come over that jump and just keep their center of gravity low. Their shoulders stay nice and poised and square to their skates. Dean Moriarty of Canada, Daniel Bergeson of the USA are moving on to the next round. It'll be the quarterfinals when they hit the ice next. And a little time for celebration for Dean Moriarty. He's now standing by with our Will Christian. Thanks, guys. Dean, you seem like you've really got this track dialed in your head. How important is it out there to get into a rhythm? Yeah, it's important to get into a rhythm. I mean, that, that round of 64 is the toughest uh, round of them all. Once you get a clean one there, I think it uh, flows the whole way through the night. And as I spoke to you earlier, you talked about this track being perhaps a little more suited to smaller guys such as yourself as you're more agile. Would you say that's the case as the evening's going on? Yeah, for sure. It's a bit more technical and the smaller guys have a little bit of an advantage. I mean, we can get some strides where uh, the bigger guys can't and uh, hopefully uh, stay ahead. Great. Thanks, Dean. Guys. All right, Will, we're moving right into heat number five and another international heat loaded with Canadians and one Swiss rider. Derek Cosimiglio of Canada, Stephen Cox of Canada, and Scott Croxel, number 26. Keep an eye on him. Derek Wedge also in this one. And 
The 2015 Red Bull Crash Ice World Champion Scotty Croxel has got to be the favorite here, JR, because of his starts. Yeah, no question. And also Derek Wedge because he's willing to take chances. And that's one thing that you need to do in this short race. Scott Croxall in good position, knows exactly what he needs to do. Gets out in front right there. Nice move to the inside, allows him to get that first place. Again, Derek Wedge coming in in third. And right now it is Stephen Cox who's in a transfer position, trying not to get wedged out as Wedge makes his way in as they make one more big left-hand turn. And what a finish! At the very end, it is Derek Wedge who looked like he was not going to move on. It looked like Stephen Cox had it all wrapped up. And in the end, it is Scott Croxall and Derek Wedge that'll move on to the quarters. Wow, again, in such a short track, mistakes end up being very costly as it was for Stephen Cox. Here's the start right there. Again, making sure they get up that jump. Perfect, perfect transition right there by Scott Croxall. You see that, that nice tight tuck and getting in there. These guys are crazy when it comes to the speed. And Scott Cox, you'll see when he comes into the last position, here's that first GoPro turn right there. They're all in nice position. But when you miss out on those moguls like Scott Cox did, it totally ruins your rhythm and your speed. And that's where Derek Wedge really took advantage. Scott Cox all coming over again. Again, perfect position. And Wedge coming over, allowing that inside lane to play second and move on. Perfectly timed by Derek Wedge, Scott Croxall, Derek Wedge moving on. The 2015 world champ is standing by with Will. Thanks, guys. Scott, you're looking strong out there, but you are against a very strong local contingent here of racers. We saw you come in second last year. What's it going to take to take that top spot on the podium this year? Yeah, I'm focused. I've had a lot of success here in St. Paul in the past few years, and um, I'm just going to keep rolling, keep uh, heat, one heat at a time. Good luck. Thanks, Scott. Guys. Scott's brother, the 2012 world champion and three-time winner here in St. Paul, Kyle Croxall, takes on this track when we return to Crash Die St. Paul, part of the Red Bull Signature Series. Welcome back to the Red Bull Signature Series. I am your host, Sal Masakela, and this is Crash Die St. Paul. Having an experienced hockey background is only going to get you so far in Red Bull Crash Dice. As our own Jeremy Roenick can attest, skating on a flat surface does not prepare you for the jumps, drops, turns, and technical features of a crash dice course. With an eclectic variety of skills, the men and women who compete in this sport have a unique training regimen that includes everything from competitive water skiing to downhill skiing to what many call aggressive rollerblading. Even with a strong background in multiple disciplines, the bar of athleticism is so high that each and every athlete who has the hopes of cracking the top 10 must train hard in the off season. And with no actual permanent tracks to practice on anywhere in the world, these athletes have found a myriad of ways to push their mental and physical capabilities so they can stay in that competitive zone for the sport they have grown to love. I do a lot of things in the off season to train, uh, mostly in the gym, Tangletown CrossFit in Minneapolis with a group of guys that I work out with. I go to a lot of skate parks, Pine View BMX track up in St. Cloud, Minnesota. So I skate at Acceleration Minnesota, which is uh, skating on treadmills, and they turn on the incline, turn up the speed, do all that sort of stuff for me. I also go to skate parks in the uh, summertime and in the off season, and then as well as hitting the gym, trying to do a CrossFit high intensity type workout. I think our off season is a little different from most of the ice cross downhill guys in our summer we're both on team canada's water ski show team so it's basically a 40 minute themed show we do massive pyramids barefoot water skiing ski jumping basically anything you can think of on the water behind the boat i'm probably one of the few that actually has a family that that does this so i have a wife and three kids and I work full time so most of my training happens over my lunch hour when I can sneak in an hour uh, in the gym but I try and make the most of it. I, I know that 
it is what it is and I just train when I can. I train mainly by rollerblading in the summer because we don't have a permanent track anywhere in the winter. So you put rollerblades on and you try to find you know cool spots or cool skate parks to go and practice taking features. When I first got into the sport, it wasn't taken so seriously. As a matter of fact, it wasn't really called a sport, it was an event. I think that in the work ethic in the off season, I think it just trickles down to all the other athletes and they see success and then they see why the success is happening. And it's just making everybody want to work harder and it's making the sport better. So folks, you heard it here first, aggressive rollerblading. Look for that to be breaking out. JR, are you gonna do an aggressive rollerblading now that you're uh, retired? I, I don't think I'd like the road burns <laughs> I'd have after, after that training session. As we move on in the round of 32, this is heat number six. Mikhail Urban of the Czech Republic. Kyle Crox, I'll keep an eye on him in the black and red. Mirko Lati of Finland. And Lucas Kolk, also of the Czech Republic. Kyle Crox all needs to get off to a good start right here with his strength and power can really hold off the speed and the moguls of the start and he does that just perfectly right there as he comes up over the bf goodrich wall ride what a quick turn by kyle croxall allows him to get out of there unscathed and he is a big man no easy task getting around kyle croxall and that's the case right now for mirko lati of finland who sits in second place so croxall out in front lati sitting in second place what's on the line the top two spots are moving on to the quarterfinals and it'll be croxall from start to finish, Latte of Finland taking second. Again, a nice, clean race right there. Not too much bumping, not too many falls. The ice seems to be holding up okay. Kyle Croxall, very happy to be moving on right here. But you start to see that start, those three, four strides and that drop in. And look at him come up here. Look at the edge work. Look at him turn, turn into that crazy area where all the ice is really chipped up right there. He maneuvers that really well. Trust me, as a hockey player, getting your edges caught in there could really mess up your center of gravity and your balance, but Kyle Croxall holds on to it tight. Lati holding on to that nice poised position, making sure he doesn't lose pace with the leader as they come up over that last hill into the final drop, into the finish line. Kyle Croxall moving on. So it's Croxall and Lati moving on to the quarterfinals. Here's Will with the winner. Thanks, Todd. Kyle, you come into this round with the most wins here in St. Paul, and with a performance like that, you might well be on track to do it again. Yeah, for sure. I had a nice clean run the first two. Uh, I always love the track here. It suits me well. I've won three times, and uh, trying to get on the final and uh, do the same thing again. Great. Thanks so much, Kyle. Good luck. Thank you, Will. Our last two men's round of 32 heats are up when we return to Crash Dice St. Paul. You are watching the Red Bull Signature Series. Welcome back to the Red Bull Signature Series and Crashed Ice. Over 100,000 fans are breezing the cold of St. Paul for a glimpse of ice cross downhill greatness. Todd Ayers alongside Jeremy Roenick as we get set for heat seven of the round of 32. Out of top Americans in this one, TJ Albrecht, the 29 year old out of Minneapolis, Minnesota. Marty Niefnecker of Germany, Luca Delago of Austria, and Tori Murs, also of the USA, out of Lakeville, Minnesota, just 24 years of age. Why is it that all the crashed ice guys from the U.S. are from Minnesota? <laughs> there must be a lot of hockey out there. Everyone right now is chasing the man out in front, and that is Luca Delago of Austria. This guy just shot out of the start like a bullet. The man trying to track him down is Tori Murs of the USA in the black and white stripes. Again, look how they got prepared for these four moguls right there. They all got around them pretty easy, and it's coming over this last dino bridge to get that speed that gets them up propelled over the final turn. Wow, look at Delago. That has got to be one of the fastest eats we've seen so far. Tori Mers is in there. Unfortunately, Marty Niefnecker and TJ Albrecht have been eliminated. Yeah, this was a smooth race right here, and look at the technique right here. Kind of strange, but he gets all the way to the top of that mogul. And this one again right here, just lifting his knees, not really propelling himself over that last ledge. Finds himself a little bit out of control, but manages to hold on to it. That's what makes the start of this race so tough for these competitors. Luca Delago using his own form as he flies over 
that one obstacle, but it puts him out in front as Tory Murs was close behind but unable to close that gap. God, the strength in these guys' legs is absolutely incredible. Take away the ice conditions, but it's the, the height of these jumps and making sure that they keep their legs in good position, their heads in good position, their bodies in good position. I'll tell you, the concentration is amazing. An amazing air awareness by both of those men as they are moving on to the quarterfinals. As we go back to the top of the hill, heat number eight, Dylan Moriarty of Canada, Tommy Mertz of the USA, Marco Delago of Austria, and Michael Iggy Ilianello of the USA. Coming out of Charleston, South Carolina, but he's originally from Rochester, New York. Well, we'll see if Marco Delago can join his brother, Luco Delago, in the next round. Two brothers that thrive in this competition and love this track right here because they love speed. And what a difference this course is from what we saw in Finland. The one in Finland twice as long. This one, JR, more of a sprint, but man, you better be on your center of gravity. Absolutely. There's no question that one little mistake, whether it's a skating mistake or an angle mistake, or it's just a timing mistake that you can have right here on these moguls, they all go over them just perfectly, making sure their heads stay in perfect position and use those knees as shock absorbers. And what a final we got coming down to down the to end. The wire. Marco Delago looked like he had it sewn up, but it's Dylan Moriarty who comes through at the end. It was like a Talladega turn in NASCAR, three wide, and it is Moriarty of Canada that's moving on. Marco Delaga also getting a transfer position. Wow, you see the excitement at the finish. There is excitement in the start. The best race that we have seen so far. Again, no strides as they come through the speed slot off the start, coming into the GoPro turn. Again, that steep drop right there, you have to get in the perfect position to make that tight turn. Look at everybody dragging off each other, coming down into that nice slip, slippery cove. Boom, nice tight turns. But this final stretch right here, to be able to come up out of the air and then make that turn to dash for that final spot at the finish line, Todd, it is unbelievable And some sliding and some striding. But it's the skate that counts as it goes across clearly, Dylan Moriarty of Canada gets the victory as DeLago gets second. Let's check in with Will Christian. Thanks, Todd. Dylan, I think you had to work for that win harder than we've seen anybody so far this evening. Talk me through that. Yeah, I got, uh, I got caught in round 32 with Tommy Mertz and Marco DeLago, two amazing skaters, and uh, just got a, I had a good gate start, just ended up in third. Waited the whole track really patiently and uh, knew I can pass at the end, so I took it on the inside and passed both of them and ended up finishing first. Just gotta get up the gate starts and try to get that whole shot to win it. Fun to watch. Thank you, Dylan. Todd. Thank you, Will. The quarterfinals are set, and the world championship points leader Cameron Nas and Max Dunn face off in our first heat. Stick around, this is Crash Dice St. Paul, a part of the Red Bull Signature Series. This is Crashed Ice, a part of the Red Bull Signature Series. Team USA fans are ready for our first men's quarterfinal, which includes favorites and world championship points leader Max Dunn and Cameron Nas. And this one is absolutely loaded with Guillaume Bouvet Morissette, who's been a very strong young man out of Canada, Marcus Yola of Finland, and Cameron Nas, the 27 year old out of Lakeville, Minnesota, and Maxwell Dunn, 26 years of age, out of Burnsville, Minnesota. Definitely two of the favorites in St. Paul, Cameron Nas, Maxwell Dunn. Cameron Nas loving this track. The speed is so perfect for him. His lower body, Todd, his legs are so strong. Perfect for the first part of this race as he gets over. Very, very fluid over the first moguls and up into the BF Goodrich wall ride. Look at how quickly he gets around there to open up his lead. Carrying a ton of speed, Cameron Nas out in front. He's got Maxwell Dunn on his six. And four years ago, you never would have said the two Americans coming into this quarterfinal are the odds on favor, but they are showing it here as Cameron Nas and oh Maxwell Dunn going down hard. Goodness. But it's close enough to the finish line that he gives himself just enough insurance to get to the finish, but wow, almost missing out on the semis is Max Dunn as he has a crash right at the finish. He's in a bit of pain. Wow, and if I get this right, he landed right on his head as he came over that last mogul. This was that turn at the BF Goodrich wall ride. Cameron Nas, look at how tight he makes that turn, staying in on the nice clean ice as he extends his lead as Dunn behind him 
holds his footing, gets a little bit late there with his back foot, but again, the agility and the athleticism that Maxwell Dunn showed there, again, keeping on that nice ice, that's where we lose one of the competitors, and then it's a race around this last corner, and this is where they can really open up some spaces. Right there, bang, he hits his head, Maxwell Dunn, unbelievable that he can get up with his face, be yeah. able to get down in there if it wasn't for the, oh, the contact of the head on the ice, but again, the strength Maxwell Dunn showed right there to allow himself to finish the race is incredible. Nas and Dunn are moving on to the semifinals and Max is with Will. Thanks guys. Max, there was a lot of nervous fans out here watching yourself and the points leader Cameron has face off so early in the quarterfinals. Yeah. And then you took that fall, everybody held their breath. What were you thinking at that point? I, I was nothing. I just felt the pain and I was like, I gotta get up, gotta get up, make it. I honestly, I thought someone would pass me, but no one was there, so I just kept fighting. And what's it gonna take at this point, you think, to take the win here tonight and perhaps move on to the championship in, in Ottawa? No more mistakes like that one. I gotta get clean runs. Thanks, Max. Thank Guys. All right, Will, we are moving right back to the top of the course. This is quarterfinal number two and another good one. Two men in pink in this one. You've got John Fisher and Dean Moriarty, the Canadians, then Tristan Dugardil of France and Daniel Bergerson of the USA. Bergerson's in the all black kit. Yeah, this strength, I think, is what, what going to hurt John Fisher in this one. Coming down this first leg, we talk about how strong Kyle Croxall and Cameron Nas are. John Fisher, I think, is really struggles off the start like that. And as we can see, he's in fourth place with the GoPro on his helmet. Ferguson there with a beautiful inside line, trying to move from third into second. And now he's got a great battle going with Francis Dugardale. But out in front, it is Moriarty, Dean Moriarty, the 22-year-old out of Montreal, leading the way. Yeah, this is the straightaway that they have to really be careful. Those bumps right there are higher than they seem, and it's exactly what happens. If you get too much air, landing that is pretty tough, and Moriarty and Bergerson come in one, two, and move on. What a finish. Dean Moriarty in the pink with the Canadian leaf on his back. A great finish, and Danny Bergerson of the USA strong as well. Yeah, good start again, coming off into that first drop in. As you can see on the left-hand side, Fisher not as strong as the other competitors, a little bit more cautious coming through the start through the BF Goodrich wall ride. Moriarty handles it really well. A nice pass right there by Bergeson. Bergeson now has a little room to breathe, but Dugardil going down almost takes Bergeson down with that skate that came out, but in the end, just enough. Watch that skate go yeah. wide. Almost clips him. Again, you get a little bit too vertical, and you don't stay in that tuck position, and it's really hard to land that jump. So it is Moriarty and Bergeson moving on into the semifinals. They'll be in semifinal number one. John Fisher's been eliminated. Both men proud to be moving on here in St. Paul. Our next quarterfinal is getting ready in the gate with fist bumps and high fives. More racing action when we return to Crash Dice St. Paul. You're watching the Red Bull Signature Series. A sea of spectators are on the edge of their seats and standing for our third quarterfinal here in St. Paul for Crash Dice part of the Red Bull Signature Series, as three past world champions are loaded into the gates. This might be one of the best races of the night right here. The two Croxall brothers. Scott Croxall's been dominating. Kyle's a big, strong brother. And then one of my favorites, Derek Wedge. We already talked about his crazy way that he <laughs> tackles these, these races. I love the way he's always on edge. He'll take chances in this race. Scott Croxall will get the lead, the man in black, but it's his brother right on his left-hand side. So a dangerous for the rest of the field. The Croxall brothers are going one and two. Wedge on the outside looking in, the man in fourth place. Yeah, not a surprise that we see Scott Croxall out to an early lead. He's gonna wanna hold it because he knows strength is important. He knows his brother is bigger and stronger. Nice transition up to the wall over the dino bridge. And look Whoa. at that, look at, that's the guy I was talking about. Look how much 
that Daniel Wedge actually went after. Derek Wedge goes crazy over that to try to make up ground, but it's not enough as the Croxall brothers advance. Mirko Lotti and Derek Wedge doing anything they could to get past the wall of Croxall, but it's not to be as Scott Croxall, his brother Kyle, they are also into the semifinals. Yeah, there's a reason why the Croxall brothers have dominated this sport for so long. Actually, Kyle dominated this before Scott. Scott has really improved over the last couple of years and now probably better than Kyle, but they're showing their strengths right here. Lati hanging in there tight. Look at the poise. Look at the way that their knees come up. Their head really doesn't go up too high. And even when they get out of position a little bit, their strength, they're able to overcome it. That's why these guys dominate the crashed ice races. And this is what I love. Look at Derek Wedge comes over this and tries to get something a little extra to get in there, but was not able to hold the landing and finishes fourth. He went for the high risk, high reward maneuver, but it was Kyle Croxall that had that line covered. Look at this, just launches himself as Wedge comes up just a little bit short. The Canadian flag is flying. The Croxall brothers are into the semifinals. So take a deep breath and get ready for our fourth quarter final. Another great one loaded with talented athletes. Dylan Moriarty of Canada, Marco DeLago, and his brother Luca DeLago in this one together, and Tori Murs of the USA, the 24 year old out of Lakeville, Minnesota. So it'll be interesting to see, like the Croxall brothers, JR, if the DeLago brothers can work together. Well, it seems like the brothers, they always seem to do very well in this competition because they train together, they have that competition together, and always have meet, seem to have the, the best technique. So uh, helping out each other as brothers is, is a big bonus here, and especially in St. Paul right here. The DeLago brothers love fast ice. Ooh, and out in front, right off the bat, the man with the yellow shoulders, that is Luca DeLago. In front, he's the younger brother of Marco. These guys are going after it. They are not afraid of this track right now, not afraid of the injury. The ice seems to be holding up okay, but the speed, oh, oh. my gosh, I spoke too soon. Two athletes going down face first on the rock hard ice, and that is gonna allow the DeLago brothers to coast home. What a finish, but wow. amazing carnage out the back. Gotta make sure both those guys are okay. Wow, what a hit by Dylan Moriarty first, and then Tori Murs of the USA also taking a hard digger into the ice. Yeah, we talk about carnage. We we saw earlier Maxwell Dunn falling and hitting his head. As you see, Moriarty's touching his face right now. He went slamming head first into the face of one of the moguls, and that's why it's so difficult going at, that, at, at those moguls with such pace. The technique is essential to make sure that you hold that center of gravity. Again, good start by the DeLago brothers again. Boy, look at that leap. They didn't fall into there. They jumped into that first leap. And look at Moriarty. He's going after it early, too. Coming into that first turn where you really sep you separate yourself, Moriarty is just going after it. you got to give him props for his aggression. But this is where you get really important. This is the strides where you pick up the speed. If you don't hit these jumps and try to land all of them at first, that's what happened. A double shot to the head hurts Moriarty's chances of winning, amongst other things. And how about this reaction from the world champion? Cameron Nas, oh my. Yeah, he knows what it feels like when you fall into the ice at that speed as the Lago brothers join the Croxall brothers. And there you see the marks left by the ice here in St. Paul on the face of Dylan. His brother Dean is part of our first semifinal when we return to Crashed Ice St. Paul. You're watching the Red Bull Signature Series. Welcome back to the Red Bull Signature Series. Our first men's semifinal is in the gate here at Crashed Ice St. Paul. Todd Harris alongside Jeremy Roenick, Will Christian. As we get ready, Daniel Bergeson is in this one out of Rochester, Minnesota. Dean Moriarty, who just watched his brother Dylan knock himself silly. And then, of course, the reigning world champion Cameron Nas and Maxwell Dunn of the USA. Three Americans, one Canadian in this one. And odds on favorites got to be Cameron Nas on the left side of your screen there if he gets that whole shot, JR. Yeah, well, Moriarty also is another guy that I'm gonna look at with the speed that he has. I'm sure he's gonna be really cautious after what just happened to his brother. But again, look at Cameron Nas come out. Perfect transition. Nice poise through the GoPro turn. And here's where he's gonna separate himself 
and really take off with his power strides. And look at this, Dean Moriarty, you called it. The 22-year-old out of Montreal trying to track down the reigning world champion, the man in peak. Moriarty having his issues with the Americans, but he gets around the last corner. It'll be Cameron Nas and Dean Moriarty moving on. Let the celebration begin as those two men are into the final. What a race. Wow. Unfortunately for Bergeson and Dunn, their night is done. Well, Ber uh, there's Maxwell Dunn climbing over the wall right there. If you remember what happened to him early in the race, he banged his face coming into that last turn. And it seemed like that he was thinking about that right. and saying, listen, I got to be really careful. It was extra careful because he came down with a crashing halt right before he hit that that final that final hill before the turn. But a good start by Cameron Nas around the BF Goodrich wall ride. You see Maxwell Dunn, look at him come really far inside. Because he comes that far inside, he loses his momentum and allows Moriarty to go past him. Nas looking very comfortable with a good start off the top of the hill. Look how Cameron Nas hugs the wall there on the GoPro banners. It's just amazing. These guys know exactly the angles to take. It's really important to find that nice ice surface late in the rounds because you see right here, see the ice, how it's so banged up right there. You can lose an edge there very easily, but geez, you can't imagine how good of a skater Cameron Nas yeah. is to be able to come through there as easily as he does. So it's Cameron Nas who gets the whole shot and just flies down the hill. Now watch this. This is where it gets a little dicey. Almost takes down Moriarty. Yeah, that's it. That's exactly where Maxwell Dunn really, oh. really went for it right there. He didn't get enough height and kept, he kept his body too straight up and he wasn't able to land it early enough to get up. Cameron Nas and Moriarty finish one, two and move on. Let's check in with Will. Thanks, Todd. Dylan, due to that hard fall you took, you just had to watch your brother race from the sidelines while you're nursing your wounds there. We heard you chanting, don't let him through, don't let him through, referring to Max Dunn, who was right on his tail. What did it take for him to block him out like that, but without causing any serious contact? Yeah, he had a great start with Cameron, and then he's in second, and uh, he knows Dunn's a good good racer, and he just took those blocking lines, not the, not the time trial lines, just to block him out and get in his way, and... Uh, he held him off till the end, and it showed, and then he uh, is on to the final, so I'm happy for my brother. You continue to watch him. Thank you, guys. Two more races, and a champion will be crowned in St. Paul. Right now, we send it back to our host, Sal Masakela. Thank you, Todd Harris. Uh, how about the dominance of teams USA and Canada? They're killing it. How about Cameron Noss? Can this guy get the win in front of his hometown crowd? And raise your hand if you would like to see more of the women's championship races. Yes. Uh, you friends at home, given the opportunity, would you lace up the skates and take on this course? No, you wouldn't, because it's scary. Trust me, I've done it. There's plenty to talk about, so why don't you get involved in our conversation? Follow the Red Bull Signature Series on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, the Snapchat, any way you get down socially, just make sure you use the hashtag Red Bull Crash Dice. Or you can go to RedBullSignatureSeries.com where we have even more exclusive content for you about this and other events that we have scheduled all year just for you. And you can also download the Red Bull TV app to watch this show and catch up on every episode from every season. Why? Because we love you. You're watching Crash Dice from St. Paul, and this is the Red Bull Signature Series. Welcome back to St. Paul, Minnesota for Crash Dice, part of the Red Bull Signature Series. Most athlete siblings cheer from the sidelines for our second men's semifinal. It's two sets of brother versus brother. And once again, will they work together? Marco and Luca DeLaga of Austria, they are on the left side of your screen. They'll be facing Scott Croxall and Kyle Croxall of Canada. This is going to be a race. I cannot wait to see what happens. Some of the best skaters in Crash Dice. See if Scott can get off to a good start again as they come down that first drop in. It's Look. a Crash Dice version of the Hatfields and the McCoys as the DeLagos and the Croxels go head to head. And it's DeLagos right now, but it changes quickly. Here comes the Croxels going two and three. Luca DeLago out in front. Now they go into the wall, and Luca DeLago stays on his feet. Wow, what a transition into this straightaway. Luca DeLago looking real strong. Marco DeLago coming right in afterwards, and the Croxels. Oh, Scotty Croxel can't maneuver. He doesn't even get up the oh, back stretch. Oh, my goodness. And, and it's it, an upset, I think. What do you think? That's unbelievable, the DeLagos. 
the Lagos go one and two, and the Croxels are eliminated. And immediately, Kyle Croxel is talking to one of the officials. Well, there was a lot of contact in that race. I'm sure Kyle is wondering. We got to look back and see if there was any yeah, contact there. that was not legal. As you see, Scott is going to be done because he couldn't even finish the race. Very surprising about that. Well, let's go back into the replay and see if we can see what Kyle's arguing about. If you see at top, Luca grabs Scott's helmet right there, even knocks the GoPro right off his helmet. And then the battle ensues as Marco goes down because he cut that corner too much. And then it's coming into the next corner where I think Kyle and Scott get a little agitated. The battle is intense here as they come around. Kyle actually gets in, in place and in position but you see here again, look at Marco. He cuts that corner too much. Kyle gets inside. We already saw the GoPro go down. A tremendous yeah. battle by these three, but watch coming into the next turn. You're gonna see Luca. He's gonna have a lead and hold off Kyle right there, which causes mm. Kyle to go into the boards. We'll see it at a better angle right here. This is the end of the race. Kyle clearly now in third place as he pulls up, immediately crosses the line and checks in with the officials. But yeah, I think they're gonna get Luca DeLago because he had not one, but two shots to the face of a Croxall brother. Yeah, I'm way ahead of myself, but I'm excited because it was such a good race. And Kyle is all frustrated, as Scott is, with Luca DeLago. And we're gonna see some right here around is. here. Look at Luca holding off Kyle with his left hand, mm. actually takes him off of his edges and smashes him into the boards. Amazing that all three of them stood up but watch the face of Kyle as he starts his stride right after. You can tell the anger is just zipping through his body. There we go. So Kyle Croxel, the gloves come off immediately. Marco DeLago smart enough not to take his gloves off. Meanwhile, Scott Croxel having words with Luca and not happy about him, not once but twice, going up high with the hands into the face of a Croxel brother. The hockey instincts are coming out. Yeah, Scott Croxall is not happy, and the official ruling is now coming down. Marco DeLago and Kyle Croxall will be advancing to the final. Luca DeLago is disqualified, and Scott Croxall has a DNF. You cannot go backwards on the course, so if you don't make the hill climb at the end, you do not finish. But tempers flaring there, and Scott Croxall is not happy as he shouldn't be, but boy, I'll tell you what, what an amazing race. As you see Scott right there going to Luca, he just tells him exactly what he thinks of the, the dirty race with the hands in the face, pulling back, almost knocking his brother off. Marco trying to come in to help Luca and Kyle saying, yeah. leave them alone. See, this is more my style, Todd. You, looks like we're gonna- You love the technique of the gloves coming oh, off. Oh yeah, we're gonna go into an old fashioned hockey brawl right there as Scott Croxall very disappointed that he couldn't finish the race and move on. Just gives Luca DeLago a nice shove to the ice in St. Paul. His brother comes over to aid him. Uh, not so much, my brother's got my back. Well, you can understand why these emotions get high. This is a very tough sport. It's a physical sport and adrenaline's high. Wow, what a turn of events. To sort it all out, let's check in with Will Christian, who's standing by with Scott Croxall, who is not moving on. Thanks, Todd. Yeah, I'm here with Scott now. Scott, that semi-final race, we saw more contact than we have done in any other race tonight. We saw how frustrated you were at the end there, and now you've ended up with a DNF. What's that gonna mean for you? Um, it just means I scratched this race, and I look forward to Ottawa, and uh, try and get back on that podium. We saw you getting in there a little bit at the end with the DeLago brothers. Talk us through what happened in the race from your perspective. Uh, yeah, it wasn't really clean racing on their part. Um, you know, they kind of took me out right at the first turn on the wall ride. Um, and then after that, next turn, I got taken out again. So, um, you know, it's not very good sportsmanship. Uh, not, not good to see it from those guys. You know, they're supposed to be buddies of ours on tour. And uh, it's not, just not clean racing. Uh, it's not good to see. Your brother has made it through though, so we'll let you go there so you can watch him and support him in the final. Guys, back to you. Well, that sets up an amazing final as things have calmed down just a little bit here in St. Paul. Before we get to the big final, let's check in with Sal Masakela. Thank you, Mr. Harris. We are down to our final four with a chip on his shoulder. Kyle Croxel again facing Marco DeLago on the ice for the men's final, joined by Cameron Nas 
and Dean Moriarty. Kyle, Marco, and Cam, they've all taken home first place trophies from St. Paul. Will experience actually help them to cross the finish line first, or will Dean Moriarty be like, no, it's my turn? We're gonna find out when we return. You're watching Crash Dice from St. Paul, Minnesota, and this is the Red Bull Signature Series. Before we get to the men's final, the women's final is getting into the gate. Let's send it over to Will Christian on an update on the points for the Women's World Championship. Thanks, Todd. Well, American skater Amanda Tranzo came into the St. Paul race here tonight with a 350-point lead over Canada's Jacqueline Leger. That means that potentially she could actually wrap up the World Championship here tonight. But in order to do that, she must place at least second. Now Jacqueline didn't make it through to the final. All eyes are going to be on Tranzo. Can she handle the pressure? Guys, back to you. Thank you, Will. We're about to find out here in the women's final from St. Paul. A loaded field, but all eyes will be on 27-year-old Amanda Trunzel from Blaine, Minnesota. Does she have the goods to deliver tonight and take home the title before we get to Ottawa? In this lane, it's Tamara Kaja, the 25-year-old from Ontario. Next to her, on her left, it'll be Sadie Lundquist, the 25-year-old American out of St. Paul. The veteran of the group, 30-year-old Miriam Trepanier of Canada. And wrapping up the final, 27-year-old Amanda Trunzel from Blaine, Minnesota. She needs to finish first or second, and the title, the overall title, will be hers. Well, this track is so difficult. Strength is vital. With these women battling it out, it's gonna be very important, their pace, and how fast they can get over some of these hills, you know, leading into that final turn, that uphill is going to be detrimental if you don't have any speed. We'll see if they can handle it. And a great start by all of them as they check up their speed. Trepanye out in front, and then Trunzo immediately digging herself a hole as the two Canadians, JR, go out into the front. Yeah, Trunzo just not getting her feet underneath her as she comes down, makes a little bump right there, and tough situation for her to try to gain that championship. So Kaja and Trepanye lead the field. Trunzo trying to make up the distance, and one Canadian goes down, and just like that, Trunzo now in second place. If she can maintain this position, the title is hers. Oh, and she goes down! One turn away from claiming the overall title, and it's Miriam Trepanye of Canada who gets the victory. Amanda Trunzo will have to wait another event to try to wrap it up. What a turn of events, JR. Right before that last turn, Trunzo was in second. That's all she needed to wrap it up, and she can't complete the deal. Well, it started at the top, and Trunzo had some problems getting into that drop zone. You see her skates getting a little out of control, a little bump right there. She hits that roller, stops all of her momentum. Doesn't hurt her too much here, as the Canadian skaters get out to a nice lead, buffering that speed right there, coming up over that BF Goodrich wall ride. See, the ice is really, really chopped up. Finding that clean ice is important. These rollers, again, if you don't go over them at the right pace, you see what can happen. The head over heels takes you right out of the race real early. Trunzo still in a good position, but there it is, that one spot right before that little hill, and she is down and out. Yeah, and unfortunately, you see the little bump right here. Look at her skate. She toe picks right there. Her knees come up. She goes off balance and falls right into that hill, and the momentum, no way she can get up over that last turn. And Will's with the winner. Thanks, Todd. Miriam, huge congratulations to you. Your first win of the season. You know there's a strong women's contingent out there. We saw Jacqueline go out, but Amanda was right there with you. What did it take to bring home the win here this evening? You know, from the start, I just knew I had to do my race and not worry about anybody else on the course. And that was my focus throughout the evening. And that's what I did. And that gave me the win tonight. Now, we saw you win in Canada last year. Now we're going into Ottawa for the next race. How are you focused going into that last race of the season at home? You know, I'm going to try to carry that momentum into the Ottawa race. Of course, I'll be at home. But again, all I want to do is do my race and let everything else happen. And we'll see what goes on in Ottawa. We'll see you then. Congratulations again. Guys, back to you.
Marion, well done as she gets the victory here in St. Paul as the 100,000 plus fans have braved the cold temperatures for this, the final race of the evening. And it is a good one. After all we've seen tonight in St. Paul, it comes down to one race. Marco DeLago is here. Dean Moriarty is also in the race. Cameron Nas, the defending world champion, and Kyle Croxall. Well, I'll tell you, Marco DeLago, what he's been through in that semifinal with the near fisticuffs. Then you've got Dean Moriarty representing Canada. Next to him, though, he's got the speed merchant, the defending champion, Cameron Nas, the 27-year-old from Lakeville, Minnesota. And let's not forget Kyle Croxall, Jeremy Roenick. His emotions are sky high. Yeah, and he got into this final with a disqualification of Marco DeLago's brother. So he's all happy to be back in the final. It's been all Scott Croxall, but not in the final. It's Kyle this time and Cameron Nas in front of his home, home fans of Minnesota and Dean Moriarty having a chance to have his first ever crash ice win. It is speed versus strength as Cameron Nas goes to the front, but not quite sure of his blade positioning. And look at Moriarty, takes the spot. Cameron Nas will have to work from behind. God, you gotta love this GoPro view right here as they come around this last stretch. All of them very smooth. And then, very important, hit these moguls perfectly as Moriarty does. Comes up over that last hill that's gonna zip him up. Here it is, corner. the final corner. Moriarty, can he stay on his feet? And he does just ahead of Cameron Nas. Oh my goodness, Marco DeLago was in fourth and dove across the line. I was waiting to see him and Croxel get it mixed up again, but in the end, it was Dean Moriarty as they went in hot into that last corner, and he was the man that was able to maintain his balance ahead of Cameron Knott. Wow, look at his brother, Dylan. Just he probably wow. even more happy than his brother is watching this race. What a great start. That's Kyle Croxall jumping out, just falling into that first, first dip. Look at Moriarty, look at Cameron Nas, how tight he makes this turn. One of the best skaters in the world. His hockey background obviously helping him with his edge work, but Moriarty going after oh. his first win. Look at this, this is just amazing. All four competitors, tight turns. Again, in tight, you see Cameron Nas bumping the boards right there, probably losing a little distance, and Moriarty finding that area to make this last turn. And he just absolutely turns it on coming around this corner. Look at Nas, he gets held off by Moriarty's arm. Right there, look at Moriarty's right arm that keeps Cameron Nas out to the outside. And he can't hold his finish as he goes into the boards. Kyle Croxall goes down and Moriarty finds a way to get over the finish line for his first ever oh. crash ice championship victory. What a finish. Look at the camera work by DeLago. He sees the carnage in front of him. Moriarty able to stay on his feet and by a matter of inches, just edging out Marco DeLago. Look how close this is. It's the blade that has to cross. Oh, that's about eight inches. Wow. Look at that. What a finish. Congratulations to Dean Moriarty. He gets the win. DeLago second, Cameron Nas third, Kyle Croxall in fourth as we set it down to Will and a winner. Thanks, Todd. Dean, two days ago, your brother Dylan told us you were going to take this race, that this was your track. You skated brilliantly all evening. What is it about it that's been so perfect for you? I mean, I skated good here uh, last year, and it's almost the same track, and I made a mistake on the dyno last year that cost me, and uh, this year I just improved on that and uh, took it home. Is there a sense of redemption now for you finally getting this St. Paul win? Yeah, for sure. I had a bad start to the season, and just coming here in North America, I'm going to have a better second half, and uh, it's a good start here. Congratulations, Dean. Go and enjoy it. Guys, there's our champion. Back to you. Thank you, Will. It's now time for our Red Bull signature moment, and it goes to Team LTD skater and today's winner, Dean Moriarty. Coming in second two years ago, Dean came to St. Paul ready to finally prove that his skating skills could take him all the way. By keeping a cool head and staying on his feet, he was able to slip past the carnage and finally skate to the top of the podium. Congratulations to Dean Moriarty for his first ever Red Bull Crashed Ice Podium and today's Red Bull Signature Moment. Well, as we 
take a look at the current standings with one event to go, JR, it's on to Ottawa, but it is a log jam at the top. It's anyone's world championship. Your thoughts? Yeah, St. Paul did not disappoint again this year. And boy, these skaters show why. They are some of the best athletes in the world. No question about it. We thank St. Paul for once again being great hosts, and we send it back to Sal Masakela. Thank you, Todd, and thank you for joining us here at Crash Dice from St. Paul, Minnesota. Congratulations to Team Canada's Dean Moriarty and Miriam Trepanier for taking the top spots in the men's and women's divisions, respectively. And congratulations to the Austrian Marco Delago and American Cameron Noss rounding out that men's podium. Thank you for joining us today on behalf of our entire NBC Sports crew, including Todd Harris, Jeremy Roenick, the legend, Will Christian, and myself. We will see you next time.